Hey guys, Patrick here, and I'm back. I've moved seats, I've sort of trying things out, trying different sets of the back. And you know, I really like the YouTubers who get a couch and just sit on the couch and talk and explain and demonstrate things. But you know, as a guy who's into tech, I need to have some tech behind me to make this whole show, video, channel, ring true. Anyway guys, what we're gonna be talking about today, as it says in the title, is the Australian National Broadband Network. The reason I wanna talk about it is recently, um, the left or the right, whoever it was, came out and blamed the other side about how they screwed it up. And I wanna put some clarity towards the technological side of things. And I see a lot of comments on Facebook under articles of this event of people really don't understanding what it's about how it works and why it's in shambles right now and what's happening for the future and how people are reacting. That's what I want to touch upon right now. So let's start with the basics guys. NBN National Broadband Network is bringing fiber to Australian homes. Most businesses and universities already have fiber. Uh, if you're in WA, you're connected to the um, M1, which is goes straight down WA and it's already got fiber. So most universities, if you went to university and most schools, Schools had fiber and they had fast internet it was fantastic um, but you get home and you're on ADSL 2 or if it's even worse you're on ADSL 1 which I know a lot of people have in the regional areas of WA now the thing is ADSL 2 if you were close to the uh, node um, the speeds weren't too bad some people were getting 20 megabits um, some people were getting five if you're further away, or two or three if you're further away and your cables were old, uh, those copper cables. So I guess the first thing we have to take away from that is that the further you are from this node, the less speed you get through those copper cables coming into your home. And that was the limitation of ADSL 2 plus because technically speaking, if you're like this far from the, the node, you could get very good speeds. So, when Labour took out their plan to build the NBN, it was going to cost in the billions, but it was going to put great infrastructure that would future-proof Australia, which is in fact fibre to the premises, so the little thing you see FTTP. That was going to put in that fibre cable to the node, and then from the node to your home. Now there are plenty of homes that have this, in fact I had it in my previous home, I have now moved homes unfortunately, well fortunately for moving homes, but unfortunately I've had to leave back that fiber to the premises. Now that fiber to the premises ran a full fiber optic cable inside your home with a unit on the wall provided by NBN Co with its own battery and everything worked brilliantly. 100 down, 40 up. Now, at first it was great, um, don't get me wrong, there are issues with it. The issues are that the companies have not bought out enough bandwidth or space for the amount of subscribers they have um, to try and lower the cost so they can offer these um, awesome packages at much lower price. You're not always gonna get 100 down or 40 up, but you would be getting very close to it. And as soon as I changed subscribers from Ionet to Aussie Broadband, I was getting 90 and uh, 35, which was Right on Ionet during peak times, I was getting 30 down and about five up, which was absolutely ridiculous. Ionet has gone down the drain lately, in my opinion, since being bought out by TPG. Nevertheless, now I have moved into a home that is fiber to the node. Like I mentioned before, the node and towards your house is just one copper cable. So now there is fiber to the node, but the house is still connected via copper. And the same issue is now that ADSL 2 plus. The further you are from this node, the older the area, the worse connection you get. So now in my new home, I have 30 down and 18 up, which is pretty bad coming from what I had before. Still a lot faster than ADSL plus, and that is what the right is saying, and that is why they're saying it's still better than what you had before. But the problem is people are still paying more for something that's kind of not as good as expected or promised. So that's the two fiber technologies. They are limited and to cut costs, the right has basically cut from the node to the house and said, we're just gonna go to the node and everybody else can be on normal copper technology. That is a problem because of distances. Not everybody has, uh, well, not everybody's close to that node. And of course, 
all the older homes don't have great wiring and that creates more issues. In fact, in this house, I've been having to rewire a lot of things in the eye, uh, in the internet side of things and it's still not perfect. I've managed to get 10 extra megs just by moving a cable around which is crazy to me. But at the end of the day, it's a terrible solution from uh, this side here just to cut costs. Now, the problem that has become now is that it's so far exploded beyond the initial costs that even this bad version of the NBN is pretty darn bad. So not only have complaints risen recently in regards to internet, we have had unhappy people because of the speeds they're getting and the prices aren't that great. And NBN itself is never gonna make any money for the government, which basically means sunk costs. It is now a loss. It's, it is, it's not an asset for the government. The problem now is, and this is something that hasn't really been put out in the general media, the NBN Co and the government are planning to do something called fiber to the curb, which literally means that they are now at a stage where they've rolled out some of it and now are having to upgrade already before they thought they would have to, to upgrade it to the curb. And yes, literally to the curb, to the little box in front of your house that's near the driveway, has a little uh, concrete block on it saying Telstra or fiber or some sort of telephone icon on it. That is gonna get fiber to it and from there back to copper cables again to your home. Can you see the issue with this? It's another half step forward, one step back because Somewhere down the line, they're gonna to have to upgrade those copper cables again into your home. The cost would be cut down with the curb option, but again, it's a half-assed solution. So now we're having three types of solutions for the NBN. One is absolutely fantastic and future-proofed. The second one is a half-assed one, and the third one is a fix for that half-assed solution. So now let's get to the misconception of the whole fiber network. Telstra is bringing out a 5G network, which is a wireless network, AG, you know, 3, 4G, 5G. It's gonna be fast, it's gonna be great, but it's gonna be bloody expensive, and the plans are gonna be hugely expensive. It's not something you wanna use for your general Netflix or downloading or whatever you do on your home. Gaming is gonna suffer because the connection is never gonna be as perfect as copper or it, or fiber. I mean, at the end of the day, whatever a cable, it's a much better ping, and that's what you want in first-person shooters. So. Telstra is bringing that out and a lot of people are commenting, going around saying that, hey, why don't we invest in wireless? Because that is the future. But da 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 this is already an old technology. Well, that is the misconception. Fiber is an old technology, but it hasn't even been used to its full potential now. Fiber optic cable itself, once laid down, can exceed beyond the bandwidth limitations of wireless, which is the radio waves, which are actually limited scientifically limited, physically limited. Um, there's a certain band that you can only use. The more people on it, the more condensed it is. But with fiber, the only thing that ever needs to be, to be upgraded to increase speed and capacity is actually the box connecting the cables. So once the cables are run to every single home in Australia, to every single business, to every schooling or university uh, area, you will be able to upgrade those boxes, connecting those cables together and get more speed, more capacity as the country needs it. That is the general misconception. There is no basic limit. It's a, it's a very theoretical limit of fiber. It is light, it is the speed of light. And if you know how it works, there are little light beams going across fiber cables and it is very, very, very fast. Uh, one gigabit, which is around, I'm pretty sure, don't quote me on this, 1000 uh, megabits, which is 10 times the current speed you can get. And that is already being used in a country like, like Japan. Uh, America has that already. So we're not far behind in being able to utilize it. We just don't have the created infrastructure yet. So my call to you guys is, well, ask for fiber to the premises. Don't cop out with copper and don't just settle for the curb because it's still bad technologies that are not gonna have get to be upgraded and you're gonna end up having political recourse about all these issues that one side did this, one side did that, and one side did nothing at all. And we're having these issues and people are just not getting the, the fact that we need fiber, we need the infrastructure to rely on. And 
fiber optics are still the best solution and they are very much future-proofed more than cable, such as copper, or cables that you might see when Telstra laid things down. They're like kind of like cables that you get your TV through. It's called cable. Uh, America used to have it. They used to give them very fast internet and TV through the one cable, uh, which was absolutely fantastic. But we didn't get much of it. Not many areas were given to that by Telstra. Now, the thing is Telstra is in, in, investing in a wireless network. They are selling back their uh, tubes, their conduits back to NBN Co. Um, so NBN Co gets to own them and then rent them out to your ISPs uh, where they would be paying where you would be paying and they're getting cuts and NBN then pays um, the government. The problem is now Telstra has basically done the best deal they can. Uh, this failed network they would have to pay a lot more to upgrade it. The government has money they want to do it themselves so they're basically selling a very expensive asset that's going to cost them a lot to actually get up to scratch and instead investing that money in wireless. So that's a great business decision for Telstra and if you got uh, Telstra stocks good luck you should be doing well so far. But that is it, guys. Thank you very much for watching this rant or explanation. And I hope you have learned a little bit more about the NBN, the current three solutions, and why fiber to the premises is the best solution out of all of them. Um, but these half-assed ones are just gonna get us just there. And we're never gonna get the best performance. And you know, at the end of the day, I found out later on after reading a lot of comments, people just don't care. People just don't care. And most of the time when you're connected to the fiber, most people don't even bother. They might get the cheapest plan and basically have the same speed as they did in ADSL. My wife's grandmother, 83 year old um, gra well, grandmother, had NBN before anyone else, just because she was in a very wealthy area. And that's another connection. All the poorer areas are not getting their internet while the rich political areas where there's wealthiness is getting it first. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time and uh, subscribe if you like what I do. Don't subscribe, let me know why you don't like what I do. Happy to hear some comments and I'll catch you guys in another video. Let me know what you think of the background. I, I wanna change it, I keep changing it, but I cannot make up my mind. See you later.